Hey everyone, we're talking about the trials and tribulations of what it means to learn art, what it means to be an artist. My name is Justin Donaldson. I'm Grace Winstead. And I'm Rachel Denae. And this is the Paint and Pixels podcast. Good morning, everyone. So today I think we're going to chat for a little while about um, community, about like having art friends and art community. And what's that look like? How does that help us? So, yeah, one of, one of the things that I want to talk about first is um, where to find art community, because I know that I've spent, I've spent lots of time wishing that I had art community, you know, people who actually like care about the things I care about and uh, want the same kind of things that I want, because I know like I've spent a lot of time um, almost trying to find the community that I'm looking for in something like small business community, just because they're doing a lot of the same things that I'm doing. But at the same time, uh, you know, being an artist, we're so intimately connected with our product in a way that very few people are, you know? And so when I'm, when I've had spent some time trying to find community within maybe something like a small business group, um, yeah, there's just a lot of a lot of deviation because us as artists, we are we are the creator of the product, and we can't not be the creator of the product. Um, I use the word product very loosely, just because I'm talking about trying to integrate with with a business community. Um, but at the yeah, like we we can't disconnect in the same way they can. But at the same time, like we are the brand mm -hmm. as well, and that that gets really. It's really hard to find a community of people who is like, hey, here's the thing that we're doing. And it's all about us. <laughs> you know, like it's, we can't disconnect it from us. And so there's just so many things that we face that like, in so many ways, you just, you, you don't get that talking to people who are, are making these external products or like um, focusing in on on a craft or honing in on something that, uh, just doesn't involve themselves nearly so much. So I, I, I've always, always found that really difficult. And it's not been until I have found people who are like really taking this thing as seriously as I am, uh, that I've been able to find some degree of art community. So I just, yeah, where, where have you guys found art community versus um, where you've tried and failed maybe? So for me, it's kind of interesting because I spent... Um, the vast majority of sort of years in my art journey, really having no art community. Um, I've always had my husband who is like my biggest fan and my biggest supporter. And like, he will talk art. He's not an artist, but he'll talk art with me for hours. And at this point I've talked art with him so much that he, he can talk art with me like an artist, but he was the only person that I really had. Um, I don't share a lot of my art with my family and stuff. And I mean, like my dad is like, if I do, he just goes around bragging and embarrassing me and stuff. So I just, I, 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 very personal. It's me. So for a long time, other than my husband, I really didn't have much of an art community or art circle. And actually your discord <laughs> was my oh, first. Cool. Yeah. It was my um, first group of art friends and it's been really cool. Um, I didn't realize that when I didn't have that art community, how like insulated that I was. Um, like in what kind of way like i never looked out to see what other people were doing i never like paid attention to what other artists were doing or sort of how they were going about doing things and it really kind of limited me because i spent and i think it was part of the reason that i was so limited in being able to figure out what i even really wanted to create if that makes sense because yeah because i i wasn't seen or being inspired by anything anybody else was creating because i was never i was just drawing on my own, only doing my own stuff. I wasn't, I had no sort of outside art influence really. And I think because of that, that was part of the reason that I really struggled for a long time figuring out what I wanted to make and why I wasn't liking what I made. And I think finding sort of an art community or tribe or whatever you want to call them, um, it was almost like just sort of helped kick off my brain <laughs> to like start like, looking at like what are other people doing and what 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 do I actually even want to make 
And, and also it's just like, it keeps me creating, right? You know, when I see other people, when I see my friends creating, it kind of keeps me in that like art mode. So I'm always just constantly inspired. Like, oh, I, I want to sketch more frequently. And I want to, cause I used to go, like, I'd have these periods of like creative block where I wouldn't draw for yeah. like months or something. And I never do that anymore. And it's really easy for me having that art community and art friends that I'm talking art with that I'm sharing art with and I'm seeing their art and we're all supporting each other. And it kind of keeps me in this mode of constantly wanting to create, which has really helped my improvement because I'm drawing every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. What about you, Danae? Um, Well, I never had a ton of, of close friends throughout my life until I got to your discord and started finding people <laughs> I had stuff in common with. Yeah. Um, in the past, the people I've connected with the most were also creatives. Um, as an adult, the, the few that I was close to, they were creative, not as artists, but I've have had like bakers or musicians. Yeah. So I do think that there's a personality type that kind of connects through just creativity by itself. Um, but when it comes to art, there is, it is different. And I didn't realize exactly what I was missing until I found a group of artist and and like grace um just seeing the variety of people and seeing yeah. them like try things out that i'd never had an interest in like passion is so contagious right yes <laughs> yes and so I, I have new interests that i wasn't even looking at because of them and it's all kind of connected through art uh -huh. um and at the moment, I wouldn't say I have a ton of professional artist friends. I'm sure. still searching for more of that because I would, you know, like more of the business insight. Yeah. But even then, um, I have gotten a lot of help through for things like products. Uh, just last week, I was um, one of my friends in your group sent me a uh, coloring page because I've been oh, wanting yeah, to right. make coloring pages that are like I wanted to get a printer with the ink my own on watercolor paper that yeah. could be used that way and um but i couldn't find internet resources for resources it. i couldn't find yep. i've googled and googled right and so she sent me like she's like i've done that so you know it's just very helpful in a, in a really practical way and and the emotional support yes <laughs> <laughs> it can be really hard to find people who understand that getting into your emotions is part of it like it's <laughs> it's part of the you can't talk. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. It's it's a <laughs> huge part of like being able to connect. Yeah, people who don't belittle your your passion, your emotions, the little things that you connect to, they realize that that can be grown. Like it's a it's right. part of art to yeah. grow those little things that other people might not care about at all. Yeah, I mean, I I remember when I when I grew up, and, and this might just sound bad from when I grew up, but like being passionate about anything was a thing I couldn't do. Like, like I, I had a really hard time with the feeling of being seen yes. to be passionate or to be like really into something. And yeah, I think that I, I, I don't think it just requires a creative person to do that, but like having a group of art friends is, is a place where that is like exactly, um, the kind of thing that people are are encouraging, like encouraging you to be you and and to like really get into like like you guys wrote about like it's so completely contagious to find somebody who's passionate about something and you don't even need to care about what they're talking <laughs> about. Like as long as they're actually considerate of you as a listener, mm -hmm. then it's like you can engage at that at that same level, yes. even if you don't have the like the understanding or an innate passion. It just grows. But not everyone is like that. I do think there's something, I don't know if it's just for artists, but there's something specific about the art community that I've been in where they're, they are encouraging the passion more than the actual subject. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you're really free to be yourself. Like, yeah. you know, they're going to be there for that. Even if you know, they don't really care about what <laughs> it is. Well, I think, I think it's interesting because in a way, a lot of the culture I grew up in, it was almost like it was a threat. Yeah. Like if you're into something and you're really into, like, if you think something's important, but I'm not that thing, <laughs> then, yeah. then it's a threat. 
or if it's not valuable enough. Oh, right. Passion, yeah. Right? That's not, that's not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a valuable thing to spend or waste your time on. And it's like, it's 100% trying to gauge the value in some social way mm -hmm. that just doesn't exist where, where the, the value is to be passionate or is yeah, to like, exactly. Like, I just want to see joy in your eyes kind yeah. of thing, which is amazing. <laughs> It is. And I, I remember also like, I suppose it's really connected. And I think I've talked about this a little bit before, once before here. And it was a huge thing I learned from art community, but this wasn't like a, a consistent art community. It was, uh, I went to a portrait society of America conference. And so it was like three days of these just amazing artists. And I went into it thinking, I want to find the way to paint <laughs> which which you know doesn't exist i didn't know it at the time but it doesn't exist uh and so i was looking for the way to paint and to try and find any clues that anyone would give me and, and watching these demos and everything and what i ended up finding was that everyone was completely different <laughs> there's no single the way to paint i was just like it was freeing and and I think that I think that's also something that doesn't exist quite so much outside of the art art or or humanities community is that like you know everything else has a the way. This is the best way to do this. There's the, this is the best way to do that. And yeah, having art friends who are just like, you know what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> like <laughs> you be you, I be me, and um, and that's amazing. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, and I've also um, seen different skill levels that I feel like from the, the outside, people get judged solely based on like the end result of their art. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I have found people that I look up to so much and it's like their art, their end result art might not be quite something I'm like jealous of or something I'm sure. looking to achieve, but they have these certain qualities as a person. Like, yeah, they're so like connected to their art. Like it mm -hmm. is their baby or, <laughs> or just the sheer amount that they absolutely just love to create. Just like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the sheer amount, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> impressive. It's true. It's so that impressive. True just the knowledge that they seek sometimes. Like, I'm like, these people are encyclopedias. It's insane. <laughs> it's great. It's wonderful. And and there's, there's so much to appreciate about the individual people. Once you really get to know them, I think that's the hardest part, actually. Sure. I've, yeah. I've definitely joined because we're, we're, we're all sort of talking about online friends at the moment. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you weren't, but yeah, they, it's really hard to find in person. It friends. is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Especially, you know, like we we live in in rural <laughs> South Carolina. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's there's not going to be a huge yeah. in person art community, no matter how hard we try. Yeah. So and for me, like if I do find local artists, like it's usually such a hugely different kind of art than this. You know what I mean? Like online, yeah. you can kind of find people that are like kind of resonate with sort of the same stuff you resonate with, or you know what I mean. Online, yeah. it might be like somebody who's like, oh, well, I do something completely different and, and there's not a whole lot of, or in person, excuse me, sorry. But yeah, I, I have had stories about some uh, toxic art communities. Mm -hmm. And in general, yeah. those tend to be the ones that do say that there is like a way, a single way you should be doing it. Like uh, we have some members of our, our community who had some terrible experiences. Uh, and I, at least their experiences were more in like some more like traditional spheres where it's like they're doing gallery work and there's only one way to do it. And like everyone is just like pushing, pushing, pushing. And who's the best? It's a very power driven kind of thing. And, and yeah, I've also I've also had had social circles that are more like really more social and more about like, again, who's in power. And I, I'm not super a fan of those. Yeah. Um, um, but the, oh, sorry, go ahead, Grace. I remember, and I, I don't see this as much anymore, but I remember like several years ago, 
um, maybe more like 10 years ago or so, there was this point that it felt like this was sort of, this was like online where you had these really toxic communities of art that like, they would go around like critiquing, but you could tell yeah. it was just giant waves of bullying, like artists. Oh, no. in life. But, but if you didn't take their critique, right, you were, you were just like not a real artist. You, that meant you just were like spineless and spun like a spongy jellyfish spineless. And I remember that, that used to be, I remember pretty prevalent online. Like it felt like a decade ago, you'd have these like ways of people that would just go give huge unprompted critiques and you would get like artists. I remember it'd be like on DeviantArt and stuff. And they would like, they would be like the subject, like we're gonna all go pick on this one artist. I, it never happened to me, but I remember seeing it. And I remember thinking, now I'm like, that was just so toxic. <laughs> Yeah, like, that's tough. Like, no artist is gonna just get hit with waves and waves and waves. And 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 critique is also one of those things that's like art is so like the choices you make and everything is so personal that like it, there's no right or wrong way. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, I remember absolutely. I remember that being a fairly toxic thing that I used to see. I don't see it much anymore. I'm not gonna say it doesn't exist, but I do think, at least from what I've noticed, maybe I'm just not on the like demon art and stuff as much anymore. No, right? I I think I do remember that time. I think that the, at that time there were the kinds of personalities who were really big in the art community were maybe a little bit more bro like. I don't know. What, <laughs> I don't know. What they, they, they were like, um, yeah, a, a little less aware of how to be a healthy human being. <laughs> well, the reason that your community is so healthy is because you're at the core of it. And the way you provide feedback on art is so. Um, just kind for one it's very but, um, <laughs> yeah it's kind yeah. but it's not like toxic positivity or anything mm -hmm. you're, you're right honest. well wait we're, we're we're I think we talk a lot more function driven yes like when you do this thing in your art it has this effect you actually care about mm -hmm. making people's art better and and then you say well do you want that effect <laughs> like like I don't know like <laughs> yeah. here's the vast yeah. array of effects that you could have and if you're going for this thing, then maybe let's talk about how this thing interacts or that quality works. Or like, and then you get to make the choice for, yeah. This podcast is brought to you by my online painting courses. Now, whether you want to learn to paint landscapes in any medium, to figure out how gouache works, to work your way through form and rendering to make your paintings pop and feel lifelike, or you want to learn how to make hand-painted anime backgrounds, I have exactly what you need. My goal is to help you become a proficient and confident artist, and I'm really excited to see that happen. Now, you can find these courses in the link below, and uh, I can't wait to share everything I know with you. But for now, let's get back to the podcast. Yeah, and so one of the things, one of the things that I would encourage um, some people with, like, I know a lot of people have a hard time, especially if you're new and like, you know, your, your art's not that great yet. Uh, you know, we've all been there. Um, I, I know a lot of people can be very hesitant to kind of put their head in. You know, and as we are talking about online art communities, uh, but it happens in person too, where it's almost like you're presuming that the social hierarchy of the group is 100% based on how good you are as an artist. And I was super surprised and grateful that that is not the case most of the time. There, yeah. there is going to be a little bit of that, but, um, but yeah, I, I think for me, when I see somebody who is like, they're in on the journey and, and you can tell when they're in on the journey, like they're, they're here for it. They're here for the art and in, in whatever way that presents itself. Like I, at that point, I don't care how good you are, you know, cause you see somebody who is really going for it and you have my full and utter respect. Um, just for being in on the journey. And so like there, there are people in our community who aren't as talented, haven't, or, or aren't as skilled. They haven't sort of really pushed yet, but they're, they're in here to do the work. And I don't, I don't care if you're not that good yet. Like, that's just how, um, that's how it's worked in a lot of the communities. And I, I was always surprised by that. Just spend the time to get to know people. Don't don't brush them off right away if they're if there are inside jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways. 
one thing that I that I've thought about and and heard people talk about a lot is the um, the tendency for a group of people who know each other to to grow further and to become famous. So you have these these different kind of schools of art, right? And so like a lot of the impressionists were in the same room working together or or sort of working on the same shows, like doing the same kind of things. You have the pre-Raphaelites, they all knew each other and they all painted together and they all did things together. And it's it's not it's not even just bound up in art. You have these stories of like groups of people who knew each other and worked together. And it on so many different levels, it it works that they they become better than everyone else. And, and the reason is that, you know, like one person realizes they can do this thing and then they grow a lot. And then so that everyone around them looks at them and like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you just go good. And so they're like, there's almost like this, this healthy, I, I, sometimes you could probably call it a jealousy or, and, or sometimes you might just call it inspiration, but this like, oh, oh, that's possible. Oh, okay, cool. Let's do it. And so like you have these groups of people who are just constantly mm -hmm. um, pushing each other. And not not necessarily in an unhealthy way, but like just by being there and continuing to get better, um, you almost have this standard of getting better, of improving, of of, and obviously because they're all together, they almost kind of go in the same direction. And so you have that, and then the minute one of them gets an opportunity, like like a gallery opportunity or or a way to present or somebody who is going to be their patron they can turn around and, and there's these other, other people who like are the, also there for that opportunity. And so you kind of also have these uh, external social situations, which allow them to sort of keep moving on and, and uh, keep providing for each other. And yeah, I think that's really cool. Art world is huge. It's like a jungle. Um, when you find each other, you can kind of direct each other towards opportunities that aren't mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. Like my one of my favorite jobs I got because, you know, Justin had recommended it, and yeah, it was perfect. It was my favorite job so far. So, um, that's just a that's a really huge part. Of it is. Art friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know that I got a I got a a following when I when I first got a following. It was. Um, it was cause I was a part of one fantastic week and, uh, they helped me to sort of get my voice. And so when I had my voice and I kind of cleaned up the way that I was communicating about myself, then a whole bunch of people who knew my work were able then to turn around and tell other people about my work. And so like, I think I had two or three really big voices started sharing my work with their community and so then my following grew and so like it happened it would not have happened on my own it would not have happened without these other people or it would have happened really slowly <laughs> yeah. um and then and then i'm able to help other people out like that as well but it really like that doesn't happen unless our our followings are like really overlap um but so it happens on, on that kind of following side of things. But then it also happens, like you said, just in terms of the kind of work that you get. Um, and, you know, almost like your, your global social situation, like um, you'll just have, I, I like, I remember I had one of the guys from Castlevania wanted me to do backgrounds or, but he, but he didn't, he didn't talk to me in person because they don't always like say hey, you're the person for the job they just say here's a job and they have they have people in mind almost in hopes that people will, those people would come and talk to them yeah. about it so we posted the job and i was like hey that would be pretty perfect for me that's kind of what i do and so then i talked to him and it's like yeah you're pretty much who i had in mind about this uh and i ended up not getting the job because i was too slow we're in the middle of doing way too much um but it yeah yeah well, and if these are online art friends, the reach is global. Yeah. yeah. You know, half of my friends are on the other side of the planet. <laughs> and that's amazing on its own right. That is. <laughs> Justin, you're pretty good at taking your online friends or online acquaintances and like meeting them in person. Yeah. I actually, I, I do try and do that a lot. Um, 
as much as possible. Like it's it's not necessarily a networking thing, so much as um, I don't know. Like you see somebody's art and you enjoy it, and and you're like, I think we would be friends. You know, because on, on one side of things we're artists, and the other side of things you look at like the kind of work they make, and that's the kind of work you make, and uh, like surely we have some some very big like sort of common interests here and i i, I would like to know you um and it's kind of, it's always a little bit awkward <laughs> it's always <laughs> a little and not even just like so so i i like i did this a lot when we first st started doing the gouache course and so i got a whole bunch of friends um or or rather like online acquaintances and asking them to see if they'd like participate and and um and then I was doing those interviews. I did a whole bunch of interviews with some landscape artists. And it's really awkward because you're like, we kind of sort of know each other, but you also have that same relationship with about a million people. And so there's always a sense of like, do you actually want to be a friend? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to connect? Like, or, or sort of take it to, to actually getting to know each other a bit better. Um, and so I try to ignore the voices in my head and just like um, try to bring up people in, in that circumstance, like get them to try and participate in what I'm doing or, um, you know, like I've got a, a friend, I've never actually met him in real life. He bought a painting of mine a while back. And at that point I had, I had a lot of, of, of an audience and he, he didn't, but he has since like triple or quadrupled my audience and, and, um, yeah, now he's in the the world. He's in the the same kind of art world, art space, um, and doing way better than I am. And so I I asked him for advice the other day. Like I called him, and I was, we were uh, just talking about social media and a whole bunch of different things. And um, yeah, and so I'm actually going to go visit him next week. But it's it's really hard to try and get these relationships that exist online in some kind of almost pseudo relationship. I don't know. Like I want all my friends to be friends, to be my friends, like to, to a bigger degree than that. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's, I think that's really important just on a personal level, but then extending onto, into a, like a, a business level or even just like, even just having the ability to say, Hey, you're doing this thing really well right now. Can I call you? And can we talk about it? And what I have found is that even though I'm always nervous about it, I never want to, like, I never, I don't know. I want to do it, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm. uh, what I have found is that they're in the same boat most of the time. Like, they just want some odd friends and someone to actually talk to things um, about. It seems like even the artists who are working for companies, artists are, they're individual. But it is a huge community. And so it's almost like dealing with coworkers, maybe. It's really mm -hmm. hard to put it that way. It's hard to approach someone and say, like, I like you. I want to be friends. But also, like, there's this understanding of I could use you. Like, that's the wrong word. But it's like, <laughs> right? Like, as an art friend, there's this, there's this understanding of, hey, like, we could help each other. Yeah. Right? For sure. And it, I think at some point it's it, it, it's really tricky to reach out to someone who does have like a bigger following or more skills and not feel like you're asking for something. Right. Yeah. Cause like it's there that understanding that you are coming to them knowing that there's benefit. Right. <laughs> I, I, I always try and, and um, I don't know how to say this give enough space, provide enough space that, and, and try to provide a way out. Yes. Like, Hey, I want a friendship, but, but like, it's okay if you don't. And it truly yeah. is yes. like, if you don't have the time and the space to do this thing I'm talking about perfectly fine, that's okay. And then after like, you know, over three or four years after like two or three attempts of this, like, you know, that you're not getting yeah. involved with a certain person or, or that it would require to actually have another reason like be there in person and develop a relationship more that way um yeah but i always i always provide space i always provide 
them like more than enough of an excuse to say no. Yeah. You don't know how much energy you're asking of somebody. That, yeah. Yeah, that is, that's super true. Or how much they have to give. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Might be looking for a reason to put something out there and reach out. Yeah. Some people might be on the verge of losing it. Just like. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I, I, you were saying that I, that I kind of do this a lot and that's true. And I get rejected a bit. Mm -hmm. And that's also okay. Cause like, I, I don't know what's going on in their life. Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, I provide the space where they don't have to tell me why or like they, they, they just like, you know what? Now, now it's not a good time. It's like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. So uh, this might not be, this is not the reason that we're talking about community today, but if, if you are looking for community for art community, uh, we do have, uh, we, we call it the community, like just this this place that um, we get to talk and hang out and ask questions and share our work and everything like that. Uh, and everyone in there is either a part of one of my courses or uh, on Patreon. And I'm not really trying to be here getting you to join my Patreon, but you would have to join my Patreon to get in. That's just how it works. You could then unjoin my Patreon if you want. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're like... Like Danae said, uh, every time somebody comes in and they start contributing and being like just excited to be an artist in that space, it's actually really exciting for all of us. And um, I would definitely in, invite you guys in. That that would be really awesome to come and have you join us. Um, yeah. So thank you guys for listening and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.